Related to that, we were interested in well-being, and then uh, there's interest in business essentials, including uh, writing of email, and mental tools to help master tough subjects as personal improvement. And then uh, we have programming for everybody in Python. And English also related, I guess, to personal improvement and uh, in business. And uh, how about in the fields of business technology and data science? So there you have it. These are the courses where we got the most uh, enrollment in Coursera uh, as of 2021. In, uh, I don't know, several years ago, the DOST partnered with Coursera to offer Coursera courses to uh, the Filipino public. No? And these were courses on data science, cybersecurity, and Python programming. All in all, 75 learners uh, signed up for these Coursera courses, and they racked up a total of 1.3 million learning hours. And the completion rate was 88%, which is pretty good. And on average, the rating we got was 4.9 out of 5, which is also very good. So there is, uh, there is a, an interest and a growing interest in uh, taking up the online uh, courses from global providers. So now on the PCTS, so we have the approved PCTS and it covers credit transfers at the interface of TechBook and higher ed, basically. So we asked the question, how about credit transfers for collegiate level online courses and micro-credentials across HEIs and from other online education providers? Now, I will just show five cases of course sharing and uh, which involves transfer of credit among HEIs and these uh, uh, providers, the global providers. And uh, we'll take a look at Thailand, Malaysia, India, Indonesia, and the European Union. So credit transfer for micro credentials, we have in the case of we have in the case of Indonesia and Europe. But first, on about Thailand, this is something I uh, I learned on November 23. That would be. Uh, you know, uh, just a few weeks, I guess, from when this uh, lecture or this talk will be will be heard and listened to. So in Thailand, they have what is known as a cyber university project. And I got this from a presentation by Professor Jin Tavi Klai Sang. It's about the MOOC Academy. So they have a project and they have, I think they've gone a long way. So the courses available on their platform is now 500 plus. The organizations that co-develop these courses are 120 plus. And they've had a total of one point, about 1.5 million students and awarded, well, a little bit lower than the number than the number of students, but they still basically around 1.5 million certificates. And the 89 universities, institutions, and colleges have co-developed the MOOCs or the Massively Open Online Courses. And uh, it involved nine higher education networks across Thailand, as shown here. Uh, so 89 co-developing universities, institutions, and colleges. That's quite a huge number. And in fact, they also have eight foreign universities that are working in collaboration with them to co-develop the MOOCs. And uh, this is what they say at the curriculum level, total credits in class use of IT for teaching can be as much or can be more than 60% of the curriculum. Uh, this may be very relevant to uh, current discussions related to our return, the return of our students to in-person learning. At the course level, 
the use of IT is allowed for teaching more than 60% of the courses. And Thailand also has uh, created a credit bank for credit accumulation. So the learners can put their credits as they earn them in this bank and uh, they, to keep track of it. And then they can retrieve information uh, for whatever purpose they need uh, to show how, ma how much credit they have already uh, obtained uh, as a learner throughout their lives. So that's for Thailand. Now the following materials I got from uh, a paper by uh, Garcia, Marito, Perez, Linet, and Hayashi Reotaro. They're all from ADB. And the material is ADB brief number 20, September 2021. So here, uh, there's a comparison of four, four, three countries and one union. Malaysia, India, Indonesia, and EC. Let me uh, let me take your attention to the third row in initiation. So we'll know quickly. What these countries did. So in Malaysia, in 2014, the University Kebangsaan Malaysia, University Putra Malaysia, University Technology Mara, and University Malaysia Sarawak. And in India, uh, they have what is known as Swayam. This is, this is an acronym for study webs of active learning for young aspiring minds 16 uh, and uh, they had uh, partners in the all india council for technical education the national program on technology enhanced learning and the indian institutes institute of technology madras one of their uh, best uh, higher learning institution they also got the help of google and Persistent Systems Limited. So there's a private partnership here. And by uh, two years ago, 2020, the total enrollment in 1,300 of the platform's courses reached 16 million students. So they have a large population, but Still, it's a bit minor. And then Indonesia has the Indonesia Cyber Education Institute, or ICE. And there's an online course marketplace, which was launched just last year, July 2021, with over 1,500 online course offerings to date from 14 Indonesian national partner universities. And edX, International Content Partner Universities. So edX is a partner of the ICE Institute of Indonesia. In Europe, the European Credit Transfer System, ECTS, has been in place since 1989. And they've been at this game for a long time. And it allows a system of credit transfers used for in-person exchange system. And the rising number of online courses since 2014 has allowed the ECTS system to be used for online learning. So they did not start from zero because they already have a, uh, it's a very well articulated uh, transfer, credit transfer system, and they just adapted the system to online learning. You will see here the enabling uh, policy instruments for Malaysia, India, Indonesia, and the European Union. And they all have uh, objectives, no? Uh, lifelong learning is a common refrain, but you can see here that, uh, uh, yeah, they have their own also national uh, needs uh, for online education. Uh, if this material will be shared, then you can take a closer look at these objectives. And you have the governing bodies, MQA, or Malaysian Qualifications Agency, in the case of Malaysia. 
serves as the national quality assurance and accrediting body. In India, uh, there's a set of guidelines developed for the respective SWAYAM national coordinators. So SWAYAM is national coordinators for quality, they, they uh, take care of quality assurance. And uh, uh, okay, so uh, these national coordinators have appointments from key sectors, including India's Center of Excellence and Professional Associations. In Indonesia, the governing body is the Ministry of Education, Culture, Research, and Technology, and the Directorate for Higher Education. In Europe, there are, the national authorities determine which institutions have the right to award ECTS credits that goes for online education as well. So there are regulations and guidelines, each one different from the other. There's credit transfer for Malaysia, uh, for Swayam, uh, okay. Uh, it's the national coordinators which will pretty much determine or who are who serve as the regulators. And for Indonesia, uh, there are provisions for uh, standardization of online learning, uh, standards for outcomes, assessments, credentials, and uh, governance of online learning units within the tertiary institution. In Europe, and um, if we're looking to, uh, to deal with the issue of credits, uh, then it would be good to, it would be well to look to this example of Europe so in their case, the volume of learning is articulated based on the defined learning outcomes in their associated workloads. One credit equals 25 to 30 hours of course participation, including all learning activities such as lectures, seminars, projects, and practical work. In most countries in the union, course workload range from 1,500 to 1,800 hours per academic year as such. 60 credits are allocated to the learning outcomes and associated workload during a full-time academic year or its equivalents. Uh, so this is how they award credit. And I think they're moving more and more towards an outcomes-based uh, system of uh, determining the number of credits to specific uh, courses. Uh, and uh, you see here the limits of number of credits. So in the case of Malaysia, credit transfer is allowed for up to 30% of the total graduate, graduating credits of a specific program of study within the Malaysian qualifications framework. Uh, this is for credit transfer. So in the case of India, the maximum transfer percent per semester. And the, per semester, so the university where the student is enrolled, the parent institution may not refuse credits to a student who completes and passes SWAYAM online courses. In the case of Indonesia, up to 40% of total number of courses in a study program may be used for the transfer of credits. So this is transfer of credits. But uh, I, I guess uh, there might be a, uh, a fine dividing line between how many online credits is a school will actually allow uh, in its curriculum. So, yeah, just take note that this is for transfer of credits. So, uh, well, this is their uh, policies on the award of credit uh, units. So for Malaysia, uh, it's based on a set of criteria What's the quality of the MOOC? So somebody will have to vet the quality of the MOOC or the online course. And they authenticate the applicant's identity, of course, verification of learning attainment over several types of learning assessment, oral or online and in-person, written or open and or closed books, and proctored either online or on-site. And... Uh, well, most MOOCs develop their own learning assessments embedded in their design using either formative or summative methods. These types of MOOCs 
with embedded assessments are verified courses, where courses are not classified as verified higher education institutions could require, require testing outside the purview of the MOOC itself. For India, the courses delivered through SWAYAM are available for free to university students to earn a proctored exam conducted at designated centers. So they have to physically go to the center for assessment or test. Testing and uh, okay, the evaluation and certification of books are done by course courses host institution, and its principal examiner is responsible for course evaluation. It should be based on a comprehensive review of student performance in online discussions and formal completion of the MOOC need to be signed by the principal examiner issued through the host institution and sent to the parent institution. That's in the case of India, Swayam. In Indonesia, I uh, did not locate any specific uh, provision, but in Europe, credits are awarded to individual students after they have completed the required learning activities and achieve the defined learning outcomes. Accumulation of credits may accumulate credits to obtain qualifications as a requirement for the degree awarding institution or to document personal achievements in the lifelong learning process. So, uh, uh, well, we know that micro-credentials or mini degrees and certifications are involved specific topic areas and they're called differently by different providers. But in all of them, single courses are awarded certificates. In edX, a micro bachelor's degree or a micro master's degree may be awarded. In Audacity, a nano degree may be awarded. And uh, in Coursera, they'll consider a collection of three or four courses for award of specialization certificate. Okay. What we need to do is to establish credit units for micro-credentials. In the current integration of single courses of external providers into single courses of our uh, higher education institutions, this is achieved through the giving of weights in some, some cases, no? Uh, giving of weights to the grade attained in the external micro-credential. The grade uh, takes the role of a proxy, and that has to be stated uh, in the course syllabus for clarity. So, How many percent are you awarding to a MOOC uh, from an external provider? And for this, we have to compare intended outcomes with level descriptors. And levels 5 to 8 will be in the province of the Commission on Higher Education. Uh, but one thing we note is that the PQF levels six, seven, and eight, or even five of, uh, no, six, seven, and eight are associated with full degree programs. So you need to, to, to obtain a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, or a PhD in order, uh, you know, to be able to claim that your qualification is level six, seven, or eight, respectively. In contrast, uh, in the Tibet sector, a single training program can be given a level, uh, level one, two, three, or four, or even five. So the question is, why not for a single course or course series, 
for higher ed. Well, people might have a sense that if a course is of college level, but how do you how do you show that? What would be the evidence? Uh, we we really need to develop single course or course series descriptors for micro credentials. So uh, how do we break it down for level six? For example, we want the learner to be able to solve complex problems. Uh, would uh, could similar descriptors be developed for single courses offered online or the course series offered online? That is a task that needs to be done. And that is not only the case in the Philippines, but it's also the case in ASEAN as well. We are wrestling with this issue right now of uh, how to handle micro-credentials. And something I mentioned in my talk with them yesterday, November 23, I'm recording this November 24, and that is something that needs to be done, course descriptors. And then they have to be quality assured and uh, registered with the Philippine Qualifications Register or PICOR. And uh, if we really meant to do this, we need to comb through the catalogs of micro-credential providers, including external providers and the providers from our own universities and colleges in order to establish the credit units and the PQF level. That there are plenty of these uh, courses and that will be a yeoman's job actually. Or alternatively, I guess to make it simpler, as learners come for accreditation of the courses as part of their degree or as, as a record of their lifelong learning activities, uh, this issue of level and uh, units may be determined. Uh, we we'll go on the fly, but uh, uh, somebody will just have to keep tab of everything if we go by this route. And uh, that is all I have. Uh, well, uh, I'm sorry that I have to be delivering this uh, via a recorded session, but 